Welcome to the Hopcast. Thanks for coming back, everybody. I'm Brad Chemuski. My name is Ken Honeymeter. And today we're not drinking American craft beer. I'm traveling back to my homeland. <laughs> <laughs> Screw you and your Polish beers. We always do your Polish beers. <laughs> so good. I want to do my Irish beers. <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> uh, so we have, we have a couple of beers from Porterhouse. Um, I had the privilege of, of visiting their brew pub out in Dublin and had a great time. And that was the, actually the first time that I had tried this oyster stout. And I, I went there specifically so that I could try it. I had heard so much about it and, and thought it was so interesting. This oyster stout, not just their beers? This oyster so. stout is what I was looking for. Okay. Uh, so pleased to find it on, on their draft list and, uh, and, and ended up sampling a bunch of other stuff too. <laughs> uh, and, and had a really great time out there. So... Nice to see that they're actually bottled and and coming to Chicago these days. Yeah, I know. I've had the oyster stout a couple times on your recommendation at Bangers and Lace. So shut up! up! And it it's awesome. I like that beer mm-hmm. a lot. And, yeah. And then so we also have their triple or quadruple X full stout. Yeah, the Rassler uh, yeah, is their full stout. So minus the oysters. <laughs> <laughs> so should we go... Full, should we go regular stout and then oyster stout? I'm thinking that's probably the way to go. We'll just get our palate accustomed to the stout. Irish, Irish drinking. Irish drinking and stout, and then uh, and then we'll get experimental after right, that. Should we pull the pin? and Pull the pin. <laughs> Plug the grenade. <laughs> That's a nice, I really like the head on that. It's like nice and fluffy brown. It is. Uh, nice and stable there. Leaves a, a, a nice nice mark on the glass. Nice kind of caramely tan color. Yeah, really dark, rich color in it too. A little ruby, cherry hues. Mm-hmm. Pleasant aroma. Not like super roasty as you would kind of expect. No, but it feels rich. Mm-hmm. It does. It's very substantial. I think I'm picking up on kind of that cherry thing that you were touching on uh, in the in the color. I'm picking that up in the nose. Like a little sweetness, yeah. Mm-hmm. Certainly very rich, malty, forward character. Yeah. It smells delicious. That's yeah. the Rassler. Nice. Okay. I think it takes a couple times. You gotta take a couple sips of the Irish stouts to kind of get used to them because they're not as full body as an American stout. They're different. Yeah, I mean, this is uh, it has, a, has a stronger body than say a Guinness, but uh, a Guinness has a very light body. Um, but I, I, I think this has a nice, nice body. Probably medium to yeah, I would say medium, I guess. Okay. Um, a little, just... a little sweetness at the end, like from mm-hmm. that cherry not like a i don't think like an infective cherry no it's just kind of no. it's just kind of sweet it's mm-hmm. just yeah it mm. just has kind of like a really nice rounded balanced complex malt character like there's a lot of different stages of the of the malt you can kind of go through a a toasted stage and a roasty stage and Whoa. kind of like a graham crackery yeah. graham crackery caramely kind mm-hmm. of thing and then sweet in the finish yeah. <clears throat> mm-hmm. huh. and so, I think where the, the the first time you notice the hops is in the finish which just kind of like takes all that and kind of just <laughs> cleans it up you know but yeah even on both these beers they give you the ingredients on there the pale malt roasted barley black malt uh, flaked barley and the hops are nugget east Kennet, and galena right? mm-hmm. yeah. yep so all uh, very typical English hops on this, and that that comes through for sure. These are more like, you know, your spicy, herbal, earthy hop character to it. Yeah. Uh, not that that is in the forefront. It's certainly malt-driven beer, uh, but it, it it does finish with a, a nice kind of earthy hop bitterness. That's delicious. It makes you want to keep drinking it. It's not. Uh... Well, that's not too hot. No, no. <laughs> it's not like a 
don't want to drink the other beers, but just like mm-hmm. it, it's just delicious tasting. You're like I want to keep enjoying that. I guess. Yeah, there's it's, there's something to be said for you know a beer that's not necessarily too exciting. It's just damn delicious. You know, it's just well crafted. It's done nicely, mm-hmm. and I think this fits nicely in that category. Yeah, and then before you know it, you're out of beer. <laughs> <laughs> and you get another one. So yeah, I'm not surprised that uh, this beer is very pleasing after my experience out there in Ireland. Uh, tasted probably eight of their beers, and, and they were they were quite nice. Oh. Not pints, but yeah. oh. <laughs> I think I had a pint of the oyster stout and then samples of everything yeah, okay. else. <laughs> I thought you were Irish. <laughs> <laughs> this was just one stop. It was a whole day of stuff. Okay. But all right, uh, all right. speaking of a pint of Irish uh, oyster stout, I think... We're ready, ready to for put these down and, and get on to the crazy. Can do. All right, Ken, I'm ready for some oyster stout. I am too. Uh, I'm ready for some oysters too. But. <laughs> there's few things in, in this world that I like more than beer and oysters, so combining them together is, is going to be, especially from Ireland. <laughs> So right? <laughs> I'm ready. I'm, I'm I'm looking forward to this baby. So let's, okay, let's do it. Yeah, cool. So that poured out pretty similar. Maybe you just mentioned a little lighter. Yeah, when you're actually look watching it pour out of the bottle, it look it looks like a brown ale, and then it kind of settles down, and it's it's nice and deep and rich and dark. Mm-hmm. And a little less head on it. Or mm-hmm. The other one didn't have much head either, but a little less. Very herbal, minty aroma. Yeah. And I would attribute that more to the hops than, than the oyster. Than oyster. Yeah, you get, there are certain of those European hops that are very minty. Right, so is this the same? Yeah, it's the same hops. I like that they have the ingredients on there. Mm-hmm. American Brewers. Listen up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's kind of interesting. You got pretty much the same hop uh, bill. I mean, dosing is going to be different, I'm sure, but um, the same three hops in in both of these beers, and the the hop aroma off off of them are drastically different. Well, yeah, I'm sure it's probably pretty close to the same brewed the same way. Just one that one they add oysters to, right? It might be slightly different because you're there's a difference in um, alcohol percentage as well. So it might be slightly. It's it. I, it seems like they're fairly similar. Yeah. Or maybe the the drop down in ABV on the oyster stout is just due to the oysters being there, and that oyster liquor, and uh, providing a kind of a, a thinning agent. Okay. But uh, yeah. Let's give it a try. I already know it's gonna be great. Mm-hmm. So, I don't know if, you know, maybe some of you out there haven't had an oyster stout before. It doesn't taste like a briny oyster. <laughs> like, that's not what you get from it. Like, it, it almost not... feels, it's it's more of a mouthfeel thing. It adds, the, like, kind of a silky creaminess, almost like a milk stout, but you're getting that milkiness from a different... From a different agent or yeah, ingredient. Yeah, exactly, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's not. Uh, but it's not briny and salty or, any, or anything like that. <laughs> no, it's not what you would think. From, it's not oysters thrown into a pot of beer and right. then here's the beer. <laughs> <laughs> and I think it just you know by nature of boiling oysters, for some reason, it kind of just lends itself to a sweeter character, and that's what comes out in these beers, is just like kind of a, a very smooth sweetness. It's, mm-hmm. it's very interesting. And it's fun to have oyster stuff, especially because we can't have. No one's making oyster stouts here in the Midwest. We have no oysters, mm. so <laughs> no. So when we can get them, if we can get oysters, we eat the shit out of them. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm not gonna waste them in beer. <laughs> so it's nice to have this beer that's really a regional only beer. It's like mm-hmm. you have to either get it from this place or go to that place to have it. Yeah, and this is it, it kind of pretty cool. To be known for something so niche, like this is kind of like their flagship, like oh, Porterhouse. Right. They do that. They're the ones that do the oyster stout, oh, and everyone okay. loves it. You know, 
So kind of kind of cool. It's not your typical very uh, you know acceptable or approachable beer that there's that's their flagship. Um, at least from from my experience, this seems to be the one that everyone knows. So and that was the one they have, like people were coming in asking for it when you were there. Yep. Mm -hmm. okay. Absolutely, myself included. <laughs> <laughs> like you're the 800th pint we serve today. <laughs> I hate it, hate it, I hate it, hate it, I And uh, I guess I'll I'll leave us with this. My my other experience at Porterhouse is they have a they have one of those trough urinals, okay. and they have like a mural above the trough of people like with their arms and their their hands over the trough, and they're just like looking down into the trough, so it looks like they're just people watching you pee. <laughs> And that was very enjoyable. That was fun. Very voyeuristic. <laughs> <laughs> so thanks for watching the Hopcast. <laughs>